Here are 25 more secrets you probably missed in Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin, and one bonus secret that I really wish I'd have known about in my first playthrough. Number 1. Starting things off in the Huntsman's Copse in the Bridge Approach Bonfire, from here fall down to the cliff outside the bonfire room onto the grassy ledge, and then enter the cave at the far end of the ledge. Once you have entered the cave, walk through the passage until you reach the main opening. Then on the left hand side, you will see a row of mushrooms on the wall that you can walk down to reach the floor. On the opposite side of the cave floor, you will find a chest containing Rickard's rapier. Once you have collected this, head back to the opposite side of the cave where you will find an illusory wall leading to a small cavern, containing a large soul of a nameless soldier and a cage elevator that you can use to exit the secret area. When you are at the top, follow the passageway and you will find another illusory wall at the end, which takes you back to the dark room with the bottomless pit in the middle. Number 2 In the Harvest Valley, starting at the Mine's Bonfire, if you head towards the area containing the Crystal Lizards, take the first path on the left hand side. This will lead you to a boarded up wall with a dark magic giant behind it. Walk up to the wall and the giant will attack the wall, breaking it down. Quickly dodge past the giant and you will find another boarded up wall. Wait here for the giant to follow you, and again wait for it to attack you. The giant will then break the wall allowing you to access an area containing a torch, soul of a lost undead, the old knight pike, old knight great shield, a radiant life gem, and a smooth and silky stone. If you then return to the original area where the first boarded up wall was, you can take the other path and drop down to a chest containing a poisoned stone and a rotten pine resin. This chest can be accessed by traversing the poison mist below ground, but this way saves having to spend too long down there. Number 3 Heading over to Earthen Peak now, and from the central Earthen Peak bonfire, head up the stairs and then up the ladder in the following room. Then, head left through the door, and on the right hand side you will find three poison jars. Just behind the jars is an illusory wall. Press select and you will find an enemy who drops a dragon charm, and on the wall you will find the plus one spell quartz ring. This ring will increase your magic defense by 80. Number 4 Instead of turning right at the door for the spell quartz ring, turn left, head up the passageway and stairs containing all the poison jars. Quickly dispatch the two enemies and head up the next set of stairs. Follow them all the way to the top and turn left at the very end. On the wall directly on your left you will find an illusory wall leading to a room containing a chest, and in this chest you will find a petrified something. This can be traded with Diner and Tillo in Things Beckswit for a random high tier item. Number 5 when you leave the last secret area, turn right and head straight to the other side of the passageway. On the wall to your immediate right is another illusory wall. Once activated, this will then lead you to a hidden bonfire room, that will come in very handy for shortening the run to the boss that is directly below. Number 6 In the Iron Keep from the Threshold Bridge Bonfire, head over the bridge and into the next building. Once you have entered the building, turn right and then immediately left up a set of stairs. Then on your right hand side you will find a small alcove, on the far wall is an illusionary wall. Enter the room and turn left through the archway and you will find a ballista. On the wall opposite the ballista is another illusory wall, and once you have activated it, you will see a knight standing with his back to you on the other side. Head over to the ballista and activate it to launch a ballista bolt right into the back of the unsuspecting enemy. Also in the corner of the ballista room you will find 20 fire arrows. Number 7 Next, in the area with the lever that drops the platforms over the lava, there is a door on the left hand side. In this door you will find a Pharos Lockstone contraption on the left hand wall, and once used will unveil an illusionary wall on the far wall. After you have attacked the illusionary wall it will disappear and allow access to a ladder leading to the Belfry Sol Approach Bonfire and the Belfry Sol Optional Area. Number 8 Once you have worked your way through the Belfry Sol and are back in the Iron Keep, head down the staircase and follow the passageway. Then turn right at the end and on the wall immediately to your right you will find an illusory wall. And inside this secret room you will find two chests, one containing the Black Knight Greatsword and the other containing a protective charm and the Grand Spirit Tree Shield. Number 9 Heading over to the Royal Army Campsite now for our next secret, and the first thing you will want to do to make life easy for yourself is to eliminate all of the enemies in the area. Once that is done, head over to the ramp on the left hand side, and once at the top do a running jump at the well. Providing you make the right contact, the wooden structure will break into pieces, and if you are lucky you will fall straight down into the well. Once you are down the well though, be prepared as a boar will attack you right off the bat. Then follow the passage until you get to a ladder and head up. Once at the top you will find a lowly chest within the ruins of the building, but be warned, this is no mere chest. This is a mimic, so be prepared for all out carnage when you wake it up. When recording this footage, I thought I'd be smart and take some Lloyd's talismans with me. However, unbeknownst to me, it appears that unlike Dark Souls 1, you can't use a Lloyd's Talisman to put a Mimic back to sleep once awakened. You will need to throw it at the chest first, 
and it will open its mouth allowing you to take the item without being attacked. If like me, you didn't do this right, you will need to panic a lot and eventually kill the Mimic. Once this is done, you can collect the Dark Leggings and the Staff of Wisdom. Number 10. In the room just prior to the Prowling Magus and Congregation boss fight, the wall to the left of the entrance has an illusory wall. Once activated, you can head through, walk up the stairs and find the Priestess armor set. Number 11. All the way over to Drangleic Castle now, and from the King's Gate bonfire, turn right into the room with all the enemy statues. For this secret, you will want to beeline it straight to the far left back corner. In this room, you will need to kill an enemy near each door for it to open, but be warned, five of the rooms contain ruined sentinels. Once you have killed an enemy and its soul has activated the door to open, lure the ruined sentinel out, then make a quick dash into the room and strike the ground to break the floor. You will then drop down into a dark cavern. Quickly look around and head for the glowing passageway, as a dark dweller, well, dwells in the dark. The glowing passageway will give you access to a much needed bonfire. Now, if you leave the bonfire and head left, behind the dark dweller on the floor is a Farum armor set. But more importantly, if you head right from the bonfire, it will take you to the Dark Diver Grandal, the leader of the Pilgrims of the Dark Covenant. This is one of three locations in Dark Souls 2 that you will need to enter the chasm via Dark Diver Grandal, in order to then access the optional boss, Dark Lurker. Number 12. Still in Drang Lake Castle, and from the room containing the large painting, head out through the door on the far wall. Turn right and follow the stairs all the way to the top until you reach this section with a ladder on the left. Take the ladder down, and round the corner on the wall immediately to your left, you will find an illusory wall. Behind this wall is a much needed bonfire ready and waiting to shorten the run back to the upcoming boss fight. Number 13. Delving down into the undead crypt now, and from the undead ditch bonfire, past the rooms with the spawning hollows and graves, head up the stairs from the room with the Lydia Witch hanging out on the ledge, and in the next room on the wall to your right is an illusory wall. In this hidden room is a wall enemy in a chest containing an avalin and 15 heavy bolts. Number 14. Further into the undead crypt, and after falling through the hole near the skeleton, you will find yourself in a room with four hallways. Head to the hallway that has a grey stripe along the floor, and then face back into the room you came from. On the wall to your left as you exit the passageway, there will be an illusory wall, and behind this, you will find a Pharos contraption. Once activated, another illusory wall will be illuminated on the other side of the room. As this is a Pharos illusory wall, you will need to attack it to enter, and inside you will find Olenford's staff and the Great Lightning Spear Miracle. Number 15. Time to head over to Aldi's Keep now, and in the section past the dragon contraption is a dark corridor with hanging cages containing all forms of enemies. About halfway down this corridor on your left hand side is a door to a room full of green vials and a staircase going down to a caged acid pit. Well, halfway down the stairs on the left hand side is an illusory wall hiding a handy bonfire. Number 16. Further down the main corridor in Aldi's Keep is another smaller hall on the left hand side. This then leads to a chained up door. In order to access this area, all you need to do is lure an ogre over and get it to attack you while you are stood directly next to the door. As it attacks, dodge out of the way and the ogre will smash through the door. Lure the ogre away and then once it's far enough away, head back and you will find a chest containing the malformed shell. Number 17. In the memory of Oro, which is accessed via the tree just by the bird's nest after the pursuer's boss fight, head up the stairs and eliminate all of the enemies. Then, activate the Pharos Lockstone contraption near the entrance, and an illusory wall will appear on the far wall. Attack this illusion to open it, and you will enter a room containing another Pharos contraption and a poison trap chest, so remember to dodge out of the way after you open it. Inside the chest is a soul of a hero. Do not activate the next Pharos contraption, as this is another trap that will shoot spinning circular blades across the back wall at you, and this will really hinder the next bit. In the centre of the back wall is another illusory wall. Once activated, dive through and you will find two chests. One containing a fire seed that can be used to upgrade your pyromancy glove, and the other containing the steel armor set. Number 18. Time to head over to the first of our DLC secrets, and in the Crown of the Sunken King DLC, located in the Upper Inner Sanctum, in the area with the floor spikes and invisible Sanctum Knights, find the stairs going down. Turn around and look at the wall above the hole in the side of the staircase and you will see a square switch. If you shoot this switch, it will open a door in the upper part of the room. Then, go back up the stairs and turn left. Then go up the stone ladder and you will see a secret chamber is now accessible. All you need to do is run and jump and you will be able to access the hidden chamber bonfire. Number 19. Further down in the maze that is the Dragon Sanctum, on the way to the Elena Squalid Queen boss fight, once you drop down from the broken set of stairs where you encountered a Black Knight Drakeblood, 
turn right at the bottom of the stairs, then immediately turn left. Follow the path around the next corner, and before you reach the next set of stairs, on your left hand side, as you are heading towards the stairs, or on your right hand side if you are backtracking, there will be an illusory wall hiding a secret chamber containing the Sanctum Interior Bonfire. Number 20! Heading over now to the second DLC, The Crown of the Old Iron King, and in Broom Tower, just after the second Ashen Idol, you will find a giant set of doors. Once through them, head to your left onto an ash-covered ledge, follow it round to the right, and on your wall to your right, you will see the outline of an illusory wall in the cliff face. Once inside, you will find two chests, one containing an old radiant life gem and a wilted dusk herb. And in the second chest, you will find a soul vessel, which can be used to respec your character back with the old lady in Things Betwixt. Number 21. In Broom Tower from the Foyer Bonfire, after you have activated the elevators by inserting the Scorching Iron Scepter into the device located in the middle of the area, take the elevator all the way to the top. Then, follow the path to the left until you get to the next elevator. As soon as you get on the elevator platform, there is an illusory wall immediately in front of you in the middle of the wall. So mash that interact button to activate it. When the elevator comes back down, the wall will have disappeared and you can enter the secret room. Inside the room are lots of water vases and a chest. And in the chest you will find the hollow skin. This hood provides curse resistance and makes it easier to detect messages from the other worlds. Number 22. From the elevator with the illusory wall at the bottom, head up and take the path to the right. Enter the door and follow the long hallway, killing any enemies you see until you reach a staircase. At the top of the staircase on the wall to your left, there is a destructible wall, and in order to break this wall, you will need to herd one of the cask runners towards it, and then either allow the flaming bull head to ignite it, or throw a firebomb at it once it's in the right spot. Once you have done this, you can enter and you will find the plus one dispelling ring on the floor. This ring increases magic, lightning, fire and dark defense by 120. Number 23. From the foyer bonfire in Broom Tower, head to the area with the narrow spiked halls and iron bar gates that need opening, near the central room full of cask runners and explosive barrels. Once in there, kill the enemies located in the corridors, but leave the cask runners, as we will need to use them to destroy the two breakable walls. The first wall is located just around the corner from the first set of spiked walls you go through. Herd the cask runner in front of the wall with the bricks sticking out, and boom! You'll find a secret area with a chest inside containing a petrified dragon bone, which can be used to upgrade boss soul weapons. The other breakable wall is located just around the corner to the right of the first one, and unfortunately, when recording this, it appears one of our little cask runners got a little too cold and decided to warm up by the fire, all by himself, while I was busy herding the first one. Anyway, in this second hidden room, you will find a chest containing the Katarina gauntlets and the Katarina leggings. Number 24. Time to skate on over to the final DLC, The Crown of the Ivory King, and take a trip into frozen Elium Lois. And for our first secret area, after you have unfroze Elium Lois, head up from the inner wall bonfire to the area where the access was blocked off by ice. Then, follow the corridor round to the right where you have the three facsimile giants in their alcoves awaiting a soul to awaken them. On the right hand wall, toward the bottom of the corridor, there is an illusory wall, and once opened, you will be able to then drop down onto a bridge leading to a staircase. At the top of this staircase is a chest on the ledge containing the fire clutch ring. This ring increases fire damage to weapons with fire infusion or base fire damage, and also decreases physical defences by 80 points each. Number 25. Head down the snow path towards the giant door surrounded by four sconces, and use your torch to light them all up and then enter. Inside the door you will find an illusory wall on the wall on your left. Once opened, follow the tunnel all the way to the top and you will find the bone fist. Bonus secret! And finally, for our bonus secret, and this is one I really wish I had discovered on my first playthrough, we will struggle down into the Black Gulch, one of my least favourite areas, which came directly after the gutter, another of my least favourite areas. And for this secret, we need to head through all the enemies and poison statues that are dotted around this relatively small path. Then, once you reach the largest section at the bottom, stick to the right hand side and follow the edge, and you will find a hidden bonfire room. I spent so many attempts doing this poison infused gauntlet on my first playthrough and hated every minute of it. If only I had known about this bonfire that sits almost directly next to the boss fog gate. And that's it! Let me know in the comment section below how many of these you already knew about. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Dark Souls content.